I'll tell you what I think. The cocksucking elite who own and run everything in this fucking country are selling it out from under us tomorrow. There ain't no battle over fucking NAFTA. That's a fucking charade. Like our elections are a fucking charade. And tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, they're selling your fucking life out from under you. Don't you ever fucking forget it either. There's dick jokes coming up. Please relax. <laughs> Folks, here's the deal. I editorialize for 45 minutes. The last 15, I pull a shoot. We all pull our shoots and float down to Dick Joke Island together. <laughs> we will rest our weary heads so against the, the official story, isn't it? Small holes, tear gas, giant holes, flamethrowers. <laughs> they burn these people in their homes. Okay, that's our government. Okay. <laughs> I've seen the tape, and I, it's fucking real, and uh, whatever. Make your own conclusions. You haven't seen it, so you, it's, you know, whatever. But old Clint, you know, there's, I have no illusions about these cocksuckers. I know there's 12 guys who run the fucking world, and uh, they own every company, and, you know, it's, it's, it's fact. You can look it up. I'm not a conspiracy nut. This is all on paper. There really are 22 families who, who run and own 50% of the mainstream media, which is where we get our news. And, uh... And it's true. It's a fact. You can look it up. I don't, you know, I, I, I can't be this big of an asshole without having the truth to back me up. Otherwise, I'd be a fucking nut doing this. But see, if you have the truth with you, you can do this. Gee, I'm starting to sound like Koresh, aren't I? Fuck. People have often said I remind them of Koresh. I'm like Koresh, only without the guns or pussy. So basically, I'm just an annoying fellow. But, uh... And frustrated rock guitarist, too. <laughs> but, you know, I knew Clinton was in with the big boys when he bombed Iraq. Do you remember that? Two-day news story. Clinton launches 22 cruise missiles on Baghdad in retaliation for the alleged failed assassination attempt against George Bush. We launched 22... $3 million a piece cruise missiles to Baghdad, killing six innocent people. I think that was a little overdone, you know? You know what we should have done? We should have embarrassed the Iraqis. We should have assassinated Bush. <laughs> and said, that's how you do it, towelhead. Don't fuck with us. And see, if Bush had been the one who had died, there would have been no loss of innocent life. <laughs> yeah, so you see, I mean, that would have saved us uh, $100 million. And I love that, too, how uh, the media called it, uh, everyone in the government media called it a cowardly act on the Iraqis' part, because some Iraqi guy was going to drive a Toyota car bomb and blow himself up in the process of trying to kill the President of the United States, because that's all they can really do, since we are the imperialist rulers of the new world order. And we called that a cowardly act. Meanwhile, we're launching cruise missiles 200 miles away from floating iron islands. <laughs> Who are the cowards again? <laughs> okay. This is the material, by the way, that's kept me virtually anonymous in America. <laughs> you know, no one fucking knows me. No one gives a fuck. It's about human beings selling themselves out. The echelon attitude here, the needs of the few outweigh the needs of humanity. And sorry, that just isn't right. You know, but it's going to have to be humanity that's going to rise up and take the stand. You're just going to have to turn off your televisions. They're going to have to get in their car. They're going to have to fire everybody in Washington, D.C. that knows and does nothing. And they're going to have to do something. You know, this apathy's got to end. Otherwise, the way we live is going to end. Period. I mean, that's the bottom line. You know, and I'm not coming from a fear space. I'm really quite angry about the apathy and the fact that, you know, when people give lectures and try to tell this, people want to stand up and fight with them. Look at what's happening around us. The indications are everywhere. Everywhere. The truth is now an obscure thing. You know, the lie is the norm. There's something wrong here. What's wrong with this picture? Sorry, I'm getting crazy. No, you're not. You're, you're expressing... Frustration, I think. Hi, okay. They don't need anything. They have all this technology that they want. We can't really offer them except maybe work, do some work for them. But they don't need all of us to work for them. 
they don't respect human life in any way whatsoever. That's really our, our essence, our nature, I'm sorry. That's really our nature, our essence. And, um, you know, the cities and, and, and the culture that we're living in now is totally cut us off from the land, from who, what our real essence is, which is nature. And, um, uh, you know, we're starting to feed off each other now. Um, it's, it's like so it bizarre. Me of that sentence yeah. that, that Abraham Lincoln, that, that quote that Abraham Lincoln once said. You know, when I'm, when I'm, if you are above the earth looking down, you could be an atheist. But when I'm on the earth looking up and seeing the heavens, I, I know there's a God. It's like the duality. And I think enough of us, more of us, really need, need to start taking the perspective that what we're doing here isn't right. Um, you know, we, we, we need to get in touch with, with what's out there, um, with just the, the whole idea that, God, how did we get here? What makes me be here? You know, as opposed to going home after work, turning on TV, watching three hours of television, going to bed, getting so, up the next morning, so going to work. in our belief systems that the reality of our belief systems is being chipped away daily, you know, to what we think is real. And uh, an overlapping degree of thoughts and energy are being introduced that hopefully will open our perspective, enough people's perspective, to the point where we can experience a real leap in consciousness here. And we have to do this quickly. We have to do this by 2001 um, in, in order a to really... In particular month? Uh, between July and August. And what's happening? That's the probability. What's happening between July, August, 2001? Well, basically nothing, but, you know, we're creating our future. Much of our, our future, that our belief systems, is being focused on the book of Revelations, on other prophetic disasters that are to occur. So you're talking about <clears throat> self-fulfilling prophecy? Right. We're literally going to create it. We're literally going to create our own demise. Because we're buying into belief systems that say, we ourselves are not mature enough or grown up enough to take care of our own selves. So we need somebody to come in here and take care of us. And that's an absolute recipe for disaster. Um, because, you know, who would want to come down here and save us from ourselves? Because then they're going to have to tell us what it is that we're going to have to do. We're not taking responsibility for ourselves. 210, 12 years, whatever it is now, we're, we're right back at the same place where we're being called to do exactly the same thing. But the paradox here, Alex, would be then that if we begin to war against ourselves, that's going to exactly fuel the whole fire that's going on. Maybe for a brief time it would. Until one side surrendered. Or saw the light. You know, do you know much about the New World Order? Do you know that they're building concentration camps to put millions of people in? Do you know that the United Nations has got 300,000 troops in the United States right now that they're going to use to confiscate weapons and they're selling our active military troops, sending our active military troops out of the United States so they won't be here when this happens? Are you aware that that's going on? Do you know that just off the coast, of, of just south of the border in Veracruz, there are 300 tons of Soviet military equipment ready to invade? I mean, this is that there are states actually wanting to succeed from the from the union. Yes, yes. There are seven different. There are nine different regions. The United States is being has already been designated to be split up. They're getting ready to to, dis, to, to totally dismantle the United States of America. And you know, the only real part of the United States of America, and I get so angry with this, is Washington D.C. sixty-eight square miles. That's really all that is the United States. We are in the Republic of Arizona. People in California are in the Republic of California. It is those separate republics that make up a United States. Washington, D.C. has totally manipulated everything. We don't, we're no longer the United States with the forefathers founded. It isn't that at all. And, and you know, in 1992, um, the United States, the Congress approved the UN Charter. Well, what people aren't aware of, because it wasn't printed in the press, in the newspapers, in our controlled media, is that because it's a treaty, it supersedes the Constitution of the United States. 
The UN Charter is now the law of the land, not the Constitution anymore. And in the UN Treaty, Articles 55 and number and 56, look it up, folks, prove me wrong, state that the United States Congress no longer abides by the, and has to abide by the U.S. Constitution. As, as of 1992, the United States of America ceases to exist. They just haven't told the people yet. And they're not going to tell them until after they have outlawed all weapons, after they have totally regulated the Second Amendment and taken everybody's firearms away so you can't fight, so you can't stand there and be free anymore. This is all part of the plan.